I was inspired for Pets for Vets. I was doing some therapy dog work with my dog and a couple of colleagues at a local VA. And so we were going around and chatting with a few of the veterans. And, and my dog, he's a ham. And every, he knows just how to interact with every different individual in different situations. If somebody's in bed, he can lay quietly and just be gently pet. If somebody's working on physical therapy, he'll stand at the end and give high fives. If somebody asks him to speak, he'll talk to them. And so all the veterans meeting my dog, they would say some form of, you know, can I take him home? And Obviously, you know, I'm, I'm very much attached to my dog, but it started me thinking, well, why is therapy one hour once a week inside the walls of the VA? Why can't I use my skills as an animal trainer, understanding animal behavior and humans to make the right matches of, of dogs for veterans? Um, I knew that being in, uh, had, I had volunteered with a lot of different rescue groups, and I knew that the plight of rescued animals um, was, there was about 6 million being euthanized across the country at the time. And so it just felt like a win-win, and I could find the right animal so that it would be less stressful. A lot of times when you're adopting a new animal, you're kind of, you might be picking them for a reason that maybe because they, they look cute, but the personality, the temperament of the animal doesn't actually fit in with your lifestyle as a human, and that's where sometimes behavioral conflicts can arise. So I figured I could use my skills to eliminate that stress, find the right animal, provide a basic background of training, and create these lifelong matches and give them what I had with my dog. So we're very unique. This is not a cookie-cutter program. It's not a one-size-fits-all program. It's actually very specific for each particular veteran and each particular dog. So when we meet, we don't have any dogs in um, any, any facilities waiting. It's actually each dog is specifically selected for each veteran. So we meet each veteran, get to know um, them, ask questions, find out what it is they're looking for in a dog, their lifestyle, their personality, their expectations, and all of those things we use to develop what would be almost like a personality profile, so temperament profile of the dog that we're looking for. And then we go out to sh shelters and local rescues and look for the specific dog that's going to fit that specific person. And then once we select them, they come into the home of one of our uh, trainers that we have carefully uh, selected, and then they go through our training program. So all of our dogs go through training in the home of one of our certified uh, trainers, animal trainers, and they are learning the basic uh, behaviors, basic manners, what, um, how to transfer from, say, a shelter environment or a rescue environment into a home, and then also behaviors that fit specifically for that specific veteran. Um, and so that's dependent on, on each veteran. But what's really amazing and what's really unique is what we've discovered is that because of the way that our specific matchmaking process works, the way that we find the, the temperament, the right composite temperament of the animal for the, the veteran, we've actually found out that a lot of our dogs have started offering behaviors that we haven't trained because they're so in tuned to their human. And so they've actually started offering behaviors like waking veterans up from nightmares and for uh, like checking around corners, listening for different sounds, interruption behaviors. So it's been a really unique process to see our training combined with this amazing matchmaking process to create these amazing bonds where the animal is picking up on what their human needs. So it's uh, different with, with each animal because each animal is, is different. But um, it actually, what takes a little bit longer is getting to know our veteran because we want to make sure that we really know what our veteran is looking for, what it is they're expecting for a dog, and then we have to go out and find that. So that's actually the process that takes a little bit longer is finding the right animal for the, the veteran. And then once we have the, the dog in training, it can, can take some around three months, maybe six months, but it's, it's dependent on the dog. So there's no way to give a, an exact time frame. So we have 32 chapters across the country, and all of these chapters are run by volunteers. We have a chapter director who kind of coordinates and oversees the different activities in each chapter. They also have their own personnel and trainers that are approved by the national organization. And so all of them are following the, the pet threat policies and procedures to make sure that we're offering the quality program that we are known for. Um, and then we at the National also provide ongoing training for all of our chapter personnel and trainers. And so what we really like is that our chapters do a lot of local activities and a local fundraising because it's really important for them to have community support from the veterans within their area and to raise well awareness uh, of the, the needs of the chapter from shelters and local veterans groups. I have a lot of success stories I like to share, but I could definitely narrow it down to two. Um, one of my favorite stories 
was a gentleman who he had um, a few different complaints, but one of the the main thing uh, actually let me let me take that back. I don't want to say complaint. Um, <laughs> I have a few different success stories. Uh, one of my, my favorites is I had a, a gentleman who, uh, one of the things that he said to me that was really uh, sort of top of his list of things he was concerned about was um, nightmares, that he was having nightmares and it was creating, uh, it was making it very difficult for him to, to sleep and he hadn't had a good night's sleep since he had returned from Iraq and that had been about three years. And uh, so when we looked out to find a, a dog for him to make a match with him, he ended up, um, I ended up doing some nightmare training with his dog so to, to wake him up, to, to nuzzle, nuzzle him for um, if he was having sort of a nightmare. But what was so amazing, two things that really stood out to me from this match. The very first day that he met his dog, they, I, we get a lot of equipment for, for each of the matches that we do. So it's welcome package of equipment, which contains leashes, bowls, crates, uh, beds, toys, everything that they could possibly need to start their life together. And so in this equipment package, there was a bed, a dog bed. And so after he met his, his dog and they kind of got to know each other, he and his dog both went over to the dog bed, laid down on the, the bed. She laid down. He laid down next to her. He held his paw. And you heard this, this sign that sort of let out. and It just it felt like this let out of all this sort of tension and stress. And they took a nap together. And it was so cute and so amazing. And then what was even more incredible is that he told me his dog had been waking him up from his nightmares um, in that very first month. But after about that first month, he said he didn't really need that anymore because he didn't, he wasn't having as many nightmares because he knew that his dog was there and his dog was watching out for him. And so that it wasn't, um, that, that need to, to have her wake him up because he was having less of these nightmares. Very cool. <laughs> My other second favorite story is, um, I had a, a veteran who told me, um, that what he had lost in Iraq, um, was, his heart and his soul, and that when he came back, um, it was very difficult for him to have relationships and to, you know, care uh, about other humans. Um, he, he wanted to, but he just it just wasn't there for him, and he had tried many different therapies, uh, and he ended up coming to, to Pets for Rats, fortunately. Um, and when he received his dog, he said that his dog was just able to navigate the minefield of what was in his brain and open him up. And through loving his dog and having that relationship with his dog and, and seeing how his dog sort of navigated the world with, um, you know, with just not being concerned and just love and just sort of living in the moment, he was able to start to live like that and to open up again. And from the love of his dog, he was able to then sort of transfer that and, and get back to, to having his relationship and feeling again about other humans. And the great thing is he actually just got married last year. So uh, with PTSD, it can manifest in different ways for, for different people. And so it's never, um, you know, the same way for each individual. And so that's what's really unique about Pets for Vets as we get to know our clients and um, getting to know what it is that they're looking for and what they need from their dog. Um, we find uh, about probably about 90% of our, our clients uh, do um, self-report PTSD as um, something that they're experiencing. And so it's really amazing what dogs can do that, as I said, that there's no one way that sort of PTSD expresses itself, but dogs can sort of fit that mold in many different ways. So sometimes um, with PTSD, it's very hard to, to get up in the morning and to get motivated, get moving. And having a dog, that's that reason to get up and to get outside. Sometimes it can be very difficult to um, be outside and interacting with new people. It can be very overwhelming. And so a dog can actually act as that icebreaker. And now the entire conversation is focused on a dog. You know, tell me about your dog. What's your dog's name? And so that all of that sort of stress and focus is taken off the veteran. And they can now answer those questions and interact with others, other humans, using their dog as sort of that icebreaker. I actually had one veteran say to me that on the first day that he received his dog, he spoke with more people in that day than he had spoken with in the entire previous year, which was pretty incredible to me. Um, also, dogs, just petting a dog, it can lower uh, the, the stress hormone. Petting dogs can actually increase oxytocin. And the other really amazing thing is there's scientific studies that show when you look into a dog's eyes, 
there is an increase in oxytocin, not only for the human, but for the dog. And we all know that oxytocin is sort of the feel-good hormone. And so that lowers your cortisol and all the stress hormones and things that are, are flowing through the body that's pretty prevalent for PTSD. And so it's going to actually act as, as something to calm you down. Dogs are also amazing in that sometimes um, when they start to pick up that um, a, a person is stressed, they can come over and interrupt that either by bringing a toy or just asking to be pet. Um, so pretty incredible, and they can actually change a lot of things that uh, people are experiencing with PTSD. Another one that I hear a lot of my clients say is they love, you know, when they come home and they see their dog, is so excited to see them, that tail wagging, and that nothing else matters. It doesn't matter, you know, what they're wearing, what they look like, what kind of day they had, that their dog is just so happy to see them. That unconditional love and that support, that social support is what they've been missing and what kind of helps them, gives that boost to get back out into um, civilian life. Any veteran uh, who is, uh, has a condition that could benefit from having a dog and is capable of caring for a dog is eligible for the Pet Tourette's program. The one other thing is because our program is uh, so unique and so specific and we spend a lot of time getting to know a veteran, the veteran would have to live within the service area of one of our programs. And that is easily, you can find that on our website to see where our locations are. Well, we are always looking for uh, volunteers, so volunteers who also would like to be directors and for dog trainers, so positive reinforcement dog trainers who are interested in giving up their time to help us in making matches.